Uh, how visible is the political unrest in Israel? Yeah, Narelda, it's really just striking. People here are frustrated, they're exasperated, and they're, they're devastated. Um, we at the New Israel Fund exist to fundraise in Jewish diaspora communities and to support civil and human rights organizations on the ground. I came here in September of last year to meet with the grantees that we support, and the protests were in the tens of thousands. I partook in the regular Saturday night protests, and I've partaken in them again um, this Saturday night, and they are in the tens of thousands of people. It is remarkable that people have been able to take to the streets week in, week out, sometimes day in, day out, since January of last year. But such is the frustration of this government against this government, and such is the frustration of the status quo here that people really have no other choice but to take to the streets. And while we're deeply worried about the fate and the future of people in Israel and in Gaza here, we know that the only way forward is to change the government, and that is why there is protest against this government that is swelling in popularity each day. Michael, what are Israelis fearing when they hear that Netanyahu who is freeing up forces to move to the Lebanese border to engage with Hezbollah. People think that this government is not prepared for a war on another front. People realise that this government was not prepared for an initial war. The October 7th attacks, horrific, though they were, complete completely took Israel by surprise. The government was not prepared for them. They should have been prepared for such attacks. There were many, many warnings that have been documented in, in the New York Times and in Haaretz here that there was reporting that such attacks would take place, and yet the government had other priorities and it was caught unawares. How then can the people here trust that another front is a way to go in this war. In fact, our partners here on the ground, Mitvim and the Beryl Katz Nelson Foundation, presented something called the Israeli Initiative to us yesterday. It's a peace plan for what should come the day after. They developed it because the government has not developed such a plan. And I assure you that this plan and no other peace plan calls for an additional war on an additional front. We know the war is not making us safe, and so prosecuting an additional war is a deeply frightening prospect for people here. Michael, a single mother has become an unwitting leader in the people's movement against Netanyahu. Anavzang Kalka's son is being held hostage by Hamas. His girlfriend was released in November. Anav has just received the Truth to Power Award from your organisation. What kind of criticism has she endured since her son was taken? Yeah, look, it's it's horrible to even have to answer that Enav has uh, received criticism since her son was taken. She is not a an activist by choice. She is an activist by necessity. She is undertaking activism because she wants her son home. She has seen him gone for more than 250 days, and she wants him home today, like 120 other families do. We saw that during the last ceasefire deal, 105 hostages came home, including Matan's girlfriend. Since then, there have been multiple attempts to free hostages militarily. While we welcome any freeing of hostages, we note that the military freeing of hostages has only returned four hostages once and three another time. The only way to bring them home safely and securely and without the devastating death toll that we saw in Gaza in the last military option operation is to bring them home through a ceasefire deal. That's why the New Israel Fund has called for a ceasefire deal with the return of the hostages. It's what the Australian government has called for. It's what the United States has called for. There is an option on the table and we urge all parties to accept that option. Labor Senator Fatima Payman is calling on her own government to recognise Palestine. 140 countries recognise Palestinian statehood. Should Australia join them? Australia, in the Labor Party platform, has already committed to recognising a Palestinian state. It is important that a Palestinian state come into existence. This would be not a free kick to Hamas in return for its attacks, but rather the circumnavigating of Hamas's intentions to eradicate the Israeli state. We should see a two-state solution, which necessarily brings about the Palestinian state alongside an Israeli, Israeli state. This is the only way to end the war. And in fact, when we spoke with one of the lead pollsters here, Iran Halperin of ACORD, what he told us is that a two-state solution is unfortunately polling at an all-time low at 27%. But when couched as recognition of the Palestinian state in exchange for normalization of Israel with its relations with Arab neighbors and other moderate states playing a role in the peace and security of all peoples in Israel and in Palestine, support absolutely skyrockets. People really want to see a two-state solution. There is a majority support for that solution that will bring about a lasting and enduring peace for Israelis and Palestinians. The Australian government should call for this. They should call for this as part of a grand deal that brings an end to this conflict, because sadly, this conflict 
conflict is making no one safer. It is making no one live here in peace. Well, Michael, last month a poll of Australian Jews found a majority were concerned for the fate of Israelis and Palestinians. And you've said it's important to hold space to mourn all lives lost. Do you sense the polarisation we've seen since October 7 is softening the longer this conflict goes on? There's certainly a polarisation, but, you know, Norelda, um, what actually happened was, you would recall, you interviewed uh, another visiting grantee of ours, Avi Dabush, of Rabbis for Human Rights, when he was in Australia um, only in April. And what he was remarking is that it is very striking that in Australia, interfaith relations are breaking down and that people are polarised, because in Israel and in Palestine, day in and day out, Israelis and Palestinians are working together. Day in and day out, there is coexistence. And there is a, there, while there is, of course, polarisation, it appears that there is worse polarization in the diaspora. We cannot let that be the case. And in fact, that's why the Friends of Standing Together, another shared society organization here, is spouting up chapters all across the world, Friends of Standing Together. And there is a new chapter in Sydney that has been built. We look forward to many more chapters being built because we know that the only path out of this conflict is coexistence. The only path out of this conflict is depolarization. And we must learn to work together so that we can build a better future in the diaspora as well as here on the ground. Michael Tato from the New Israel Fund. Thank you for joining us from Israel. Thank you.